All right. Hey, everybody. This is Terry Mayo, and welcome to our panel. This is the Alterna panel that you would have been seeing if WonderCon had been going on. Uh, joined here today with David Lucarelli. Hey, guys. Ryan Wynn. Hey, guys. And like I said, my name is Terry Mayo. So um, a little bit different format than we obviously would have had at the show. But um, we're going to be talking about our books, talking about Alterna comics, talking about the past 14 years that they've been doing things and the future where we're heading from here. Um, but before we get into that, let me just throw it out to David so we can start talking about him, his book, anything he wants to shoot out. Sure. Thanks, Terry. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, the book that I do is Tinseltown. Uh, it's a period crime drama. It's about one of the first female police officers in Hollywood. So it's set in 1915. Um, it's kind of like L.A. Confidential meets Boardwalk Empire. This is the collection of the first uh, miniseries. And um, yeah, it, the, the second miniseries is going to be coming out next month. It's going to be called Tinseltown Losing the Light. And uh, there's actually a story that bridges the first miniseries and the second one that is out right now. And it came out on a Wednesday number 11 called Pinboy. So that introduces a new character. You can check that out. I should mention perhaps in real life, my mother was a police officer. So the book is also my tribute to her. Very cool. Very cool. And you said that the second, the set, you have a second um, arc that's coming out when? Um, well, I believe the last time I checked the Alterna Access site, it's now coming out towards the end of May. It got, it, it would have been out in time for WonderCon. It got a little delayed, what with uh, Diamond and everything. So <clears throat> yeah, it'll be out uh, end of May. Right. And in the first book you had Henry uh, doing the art, right? Is, is still Henry in the second? Yeah, Henry Ponciano is still the artist um, for Tinseltown. We're, we're using uh, Wes Loker to letter this one uh, instead of uh, HDE, but that was just kind of a scheduling thing. I'm actually, I still work with HDE on some other uh, other stuff, so. Cool, all right. All right, hold your book up again. I didn't bring mine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold something else. Oh, all right. I I yeah, know. so that's uh, Tinseltown, art by Henry Ponciano. Very cool. Pick it up. It's an awesome book. I, I have your Tinseltown copy right over there, but I don't want to stand up because I may or may not be wearing shorts right now. But Okay. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Thanks, David. Ryan, did you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your book? Uh, more about my book than myself. Uh, I'm a longtime inker in the industry, and this is my first time writing, and I am writing Gods and Gears. It's a four-issue action-adventure series. It's all ages. And it's inspired by cartoons and comics of the early mid '80s, and it's uh, it's not it's not like a uh, a, a throwback book. It, it is modern, but we we really embrace the uh, the ideas and the storytelling dynamics of that that era. And it's a story about two boys and their adventure through the jungle in search of uh, the truth about ancient aliens. Very and cool. it's art by Dean Cotts and West by the uh, West. Look at that. So he's, he's, he's always on everyone's mind. Lettered by Wes Loker as well. <laughs> I wonder how many books Wes letters for Alterta. Do you know? Uh, I think we stopped counting. Stopped counting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Over 90, 95%. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it seriously has to be probably, you know, 80, 90%. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I think he's been kind of the go-to guy for a while. Uh, but yeah, his, his letters are awesome. Yeah, he does great work. And this is our latest issue that's out. This is issue three. And issue four will be out at the end of May, uh, around the same time as the new Tinseltown. Got it. Cool. All right. So tell us a little bit about your book, Terry, The Wicked Righteous. Well, like I said, I don't have it, but I did read this book before I wrote it. And <laughs> but, so I don't have a copy of it. But my book is called The, uh, the Wicked Righteous, and that's the book that I have through Alterna. Uh, it's a, David always does a better job of describing it than I do, but it's a, like a dystopian future here in San Diego, California, where I'm from, follows four brothers uh, during a pandemic type setting, which now is a little sore topic. So, but that's what the book is about. Uh, it's the first arc finished last year. It was six issues. We moved on to Wicked Righteous Exodus has uh, two more issues left on that, which I think is I think we're planning all around the same time we're releasing things, uh, May, June, July-ish. 
somewhere in there. So, so that's kind of the book in itself. I, again, don't have any art. Maybe at some point we can just clip art something in here when we're, uh, when we're editing this, but, but yeah, but that's my book. Uh, after that, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing a third arc of that or not. The way it's written, I'm kind of satisfied with, with how it's ending. So, uh, so we'll see. I'm not really sure yet. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I always tell people it's kind of like a post-apocalyptic Lord of the Flies, um, because, uh, well, people wear masks in this dystopian future, right? And the virus affects, um, not doesn't affect younger people so much, mm -hmm. just kills older people. And if I could put in a, uh, an ask for a third arc, um, here's where I'd like to see it go. At the end of it, somebody wakes up and this whole pandemic virus and, and the whole th bit about the United States, like breaking apart into different, you know, mm -hmm. uh, countries, you, you know, and, and all that is just a horrible dream. And everybody's okay in the end. That's how I think the third arc should end, Terry. Kind of like Dallas, just as bizarre. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, all right. Well, you know what? I'll put that in there. I'll just asterisk, written by David LeGrow. I don't even need credit for it, really. <laughs> you know, because I do think that you have a potential career as a soothsayer or fortune teller as well, in a uh, weird sort of way. It, you know, it was, it's, it's weird. We were talking a little bit before uh, this started, the, the, the Zoom call, um, about how some of the nurses were like picking up on the things that were happening in China, like in December and January. And in my head, I was like, you know, I did so much research for the Wicked Righteous and just pandemics and how they affect people and the difference between the, the viral and when they're the lungs, the brain, wherever they're at. Uh, so when I started hearing all this stuff, I was like, oh my God, am I hypersensitive because I've researched so much or am I hypersensitive because this is real? And uh, yeah, I wish I was just hypersensitive for, yeah. you know. Well, you nurses, see, I was, I was telling uh, Terry before we started recording, I have a cousin who's a nurse, and she was telling me that she saw this coming end of December, because she was following the news coming out of China, to the point where she was putting together care packages that had, um, you know, um, like handy wipes and food and toilet paper. Somehow she was pressing enough to think of toilet paper. So, I don't know, it's amazing. You, got, you nurses are on the ball, that's all I can say. It's been an interesting time. I mean, it's, it's, it's I tell my kids, I like, I, I don't, I know you guys know, but I have seven, seven boys of my own. And I tell each and every one of them, you know, remember this time, because this is a, hopefully a once in a generation type thing that is happening. And, you know, yeah. You know, you want to be able to recall what you were doing and recall, take pictures, look back at this stuff, because this is, this is a, uh, it's new territory for all of us. Well, you know, I had a thought today, right? The comic book industry, the last time something like this happened, didn't exist yet. In 1918, there wasn't a comic book industry. So yeah, it's an interesting time. I was reading an article that said that psychologically, we're not going to remember, you know, the, 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 what it's like day to day to live like this, because there's no markers. It all tends to be a blur. Mm -hmm. I have a question for you guys. In your neighborhoods, like, is there a nightly thing where people are like, you know, hooping and hollering and and clapping and 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 banging on pots and pans like for the you know first responders and all the hospital workers not in my neighborhood no i no? haven't even heard of anything like that no. oh okay because in hollywood literally every night at eight o'clock it happens right. i mean it's like everybody goes out on their balconies i mean it's like a ritual now oh, yeah wow. yeah so. i know the, the in san diego i know the military's done flyovers over some of the hospitals Okay. Like, uh, they've lined up fire trucks and stuff like that, but that's more t in that area. Where I'm at, there's, there's, I mean, I have to drive a good 15, 20 minutes to get to a hospital. But mm. okay, so I guess we should talk more about Alterna, not just <laughs> dwell on the <laughs> pandemic. So, so Ryan, you have some exciting news about Gods and Gears. Uh, that's right. We uh, just recently, along with a few other titles, got permission. I don't know how you'd say it, but uh, we're allowed to go into ongoing numbers. So what that means is instead of uh, every four issues, which is our story arcs are four issues, instead of every four issues having to start over with a new issue one, volume two, we can just continue. Then volume two is going to start with issue five, and we're going to move on from there. And so that's, that's really exciting for us. We think it's uh, going to be far less confusing. 
um, readers, I remember with uh, Scrimshaw and a couple other titles, they were like, hey, I got issue one. Wait, hold on a second. This was volume two. And I know it says it on there and, and you know, Peter does his best. It's all there, but you just, I, I, even me as a reader, I just, I just see the issue number or whatever. I just grab it, you know, and stuff like that. So a lot of people, it confused them. It confused me when I was coloring Scrimshaw because we were calling certain issues like issue nine or something, but that was issue three or four of volume two on the stands. So Spencer and I were like, wait, what, what, who's, wait, <laughs> what issue? What page? I don't know, man. Just color it and just, I'll, we'll figure it out later. Yeah. Um, so the, for creators and readers alike, it's just going to be so much nicer. Unless you want to do the re, the restarting, unless that's what your series is into, that's that's fine too. But for for a lot of us, those uh, Dean and I included, we we're really happy to be able to go into ongoing legacy numbers. That's cool. So so me personally, I was given that option and I declined um, because mm. like I I see each Tinseltown story arc being a separate thing unto itself. And I would rather, you know, as, as soon as Tinseltown losing the light is over, I don't want the pressure of, you know, 60 days from there to come up with the start of the next story. I'd rather put out one five issue limited series that year and then put out a trade of it while I research what the next story is gonna be. So I don't have to worry about sacrificing the quality of you know what it's going to be because I actually do a fair amount of research when it comes to telling the stories. Yeah, I I I, I think I was pretty upfront with Peter that I had like because in my head the Wicked Righteous has always been about like a, a loss of innocence, like you got these kids and it's a total loss of innocence for them, and I can't see that being an ongoing thing at some point. I mean, with everything that's happened in the book so far, these kids are far from innocent. So at some point you know, uh, soon it, it's going to have to end for that. But, but I am working on some other stuff that and be pitching that out. So we'll see, but. Cool. Cool. So you also just started something kind of exciting. You started your own video channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was, it was fun. It was fun. I, I, I don't know how that came about. <laughs> honestly, I, actually my wife did a video on YouTube. She has her thing, which it was like an exercise video of some sort. And, uh, and she had so much fun with it and I was helping her like do it. Um, and I was like, this would be kind of, this would be interesting. This would be fun. So I started looking at stuff and seeing what's out there and seeing if there was anything that I could bring to it. If there wasn't anything different I could bring to it, that's the last thing I probably would have ever done. Cause in my own opinion, I don't think I'm the most personal guy online. I feel like I'm uber uncomfortable <laughs> in front of a camera, but, 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 you know, it is fun and I enjoy it. Um, yeah, but it, it's a YouTube channel. Uh, I, maybe there's a technical way to say it. I don't know, but it's just Terry Mayo is the name of the channel right now. And then, yeah, I'll be putting stuff out every week. Cool. Very cool. Um, so, so let me ask you this. Have you guys upped your online game now that because of the pandemic, there basically are no comic book shops open. There are no conventions. Like if I wanted to buy an autographed Wicked Righteous or Gods and Gears uh, how would I do that? Go ahead, Terry. Um, well, short challenge, of given... challenge. Go ahead, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? Yeah, what, what you, you got, got Terry? Oh, um, short of giving out my home address. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm open to anything. I've, I've, I've given out plenty of autographs just from people asking online. And I've always been open to that. And I think we all have been. Every, every, every creator at Altern has been open to just talking to the fans and, and, and sending them out. It's, it hasn't been an issue. Uh, so as far as upping the social media game, I don't know if we ever were lacking in the social media game, honestly. So Well, do you, but do you have like an online store just for your stuff that, you know, anything like that? Uh, no, maybe I should. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Let me write it down. Now, Ryan, how about you? Um, actually, so I don't know when this is airing, but tomorrow in real time, when we're, we're filming this, I'm actually opening a store in a store envy shop that I had a while ago and I, I closed it down about six months ago. Cause I was kind of retooling basically kind of, I wanted to plan what I wanted to do with 2020. Cool. And, uh, so basically what I'm going to be doing or what I've been doing since this whole, you know, quarantine thing 
is I let two shops sell as many of my books uh, as they could signed first uh, through their Facebook sales and Instagram sales and stuff. And that's Alakazam in uh, Costa Mesa and Brave New World in Santa Clarita. Uh, so those two shops have always supported me in Alterna. So I want to give them a hundred percent of proceeds for sketch covers and signed books and everything like that. And, uh, but now I'm going to be opening my store and store and every Wednesday I'm going to have a new batch of sketch covers and a new batch of signed uh, Gods and Gears books or some sort of like collector pack or, or something to sketch uh, or with, uh, I'm sorry, collector cards or, or something different each Wednesday. So each Wednesday I'll have probably three or four, I'm going to keep it simple at first, things. And I also have a lot of uh, books that I inked over the years and I have collections of those. So I'm going to be selling signed versions of those with either remarks on them or sketches with them, things like that. So I'm going to kind of okay. open a, a little a little personal Ryan Wynn comic shop that every Wednesday will have something new. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I myself too, I, I um, opened up a store on Etsy. If you uh, search Etsy for Abacab Studios, one word, or use the Google, um, it'll come up. And, you know, I have autographed uh, basically everything I would sell at a con, um, including like I have, you know, these pins for uh, Tinseltown got like her badge number 226 also my mom's badge number the logo the the face um and then we also have the the other book that henry ponciano and i do children's vampire hunting brigade which is kind of like a punk rock buffy set in scotland coming of age gothic adventure um three volumes in the set you can get the complete series in a limited edition slipcase along with some unreleased art as well and uh Today, I just had, I had the inspiration. I saw Zazzle was doing this thing where you can uh, do customizable face masks. So I think I'm going to have to do the vampire with iron teeth that's a character in, uh, in the brigade, too. I think you have to do that. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's a hey, great series. I love that series, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so something else you've been doing, Ryan, is you've been doing these really super cool animated videos that you've been posting on Twitter and whatnot. And they are so reflective of you. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, cause they're so like full of life and energy and they're so like, just almost whimsical in, you know, I mean, I know you've done some Batman ones and some gods and gear stuff, but, but what are your plans for all that? Uh, well, I've always liked animation. I've always liked animating. Even as a kid, I took a few animation classes here and there. Uh, it was something I kind of always thought I would end up doing. Like, I thought I'd go do comics for a while uh, because I followed the path of a lot of people. So my, my thing was, okay, you go into comics, you break in as an inker, you step up to a penciler, then you leave for a while to go do animation and commercial work, and then you come back stronger and better than ever and kick butt and so I kind of was like, oh, that'll be my goal. I'll eventually get back to animation. Mm. And I just stayed doing comics for forever. <laughs> just didn't, did, like, animation never even came back. So then Procreate, uh, which is the drawing program on the iPad Pro, uh, they came up with an animation program, and I was using that for art already. I was like, you know what? I'm going to dive back into animation. And I have this vision for this uh, Batman and Robin animated series starring Dick Grayson as Batman and Damien as Robin. I was, and that's one of my favorite eras of Batman. And so I just wanted to make the intro. So I'm slowly over this year. I'm uh, Hopefully by summer I'll be done, but who knows now. But I'm slowly making like the intro for this fake cartoon. <laughs> okay. Well, it looks uh, great. You've seen it, right, you. Terry? I mean, oh, it's, yeah. it's yeah. awesome. Thanks, awesome guys. stuff. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> huh. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Sorry, go ahead. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking. So I, right about this time, we will probably take some questions from the audience. And they always, ask, <laughs> they always ask, like, how do you guys break into comics? You know, what, what, what should you do? What, what advice can you give? Right. So that's that's like a perennial panel question for Alterna, because we're sort of like one one small step <laughs> having broken into comics. So um, so Terry. What, what would you advise people to do? Um, well, I can advise something for them not to do. Let me see. Uh, and it's something I did, which, I mean, it didn't backfire on me, but as soon as I did it, I was like, ooh, 
yeah, I think I might've should not have done that. But so I was um, maybe in 2014, 2013, when I was first started pitching things, uh, was still not comfortable, just cold walking up to people at conventions. I would head for the booth and then like make a left and then never even make eye contact. Uh, sending stuff in, it was like a cold send in, and then just, and then just, I would never hear anything. So um, at one convention, I met up with an artist at one of those um, where they value uh, the pro uh, uh, portfolio reviews, right? It was okay. a thing for writers. So I went in there, I had one of my pitches. Uh, the person there was super nice, uh, Mia Goodwin. Uh, she does a tomboy, Tommy boy, uh, for Action Lab. And she gave me a card for somebody else. Uh, and said, this is a good story, blah, blah, blah. So um, I held on to that car for like almost a year. And then just, it had, it had the person's cell phone number on it. <laughs> and so I sent the guy a text and I was like, hey, I know this is probably not appropriate. And then just <laughs> went on to say about how I, you know, admired the company, love what they do. Cause I did, and it was all true. It was all true stuff I was saying. But as I was writing, I was like, I should not be doing this. This is not the right way to do this. And told him, you know, I, you know, I'm passionate and I hope that that shows through and, all I'm asking for is a chance. Uh, a couple of days go by, he does respond. He's like, you know what, you're right. Probably wasn't the right thing to do, but you did show passion and gave me some information to send my, my, my pitch to. Uh, okay. Ended up not getting picked up, but it did give me the confidence to kind of walk up to the booth at the next con and talk to other people. I think just having that, uh, that encouragement for me, a good one. And then also from, uh, from an editor was, you know, I guess maybe the push that I needed. So maybe, I don't know, maybe, just don't put yourself on on business cards. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what the point of that story was. But. <laughs> or don't wait a year to follow up on contact. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so Ryan, you came into this as an inker. Mm -hmm. Was that? Did you? How did you get your start inking? Well, see. So it is the perennial question, like you said, at at every con online. What we do, you know, live streams and stuff. People ask these questions too. And it's, it's really tough in comics because you, from the outside, you think of it like comics, this is the comics industry and how do I break in? And, and really, I mean, the comics industry is just, just massive, sprawling, different, different things that are barely connected or in, or interstitially here and there, uh, tangentially here and there. Like, so it, it's, it's kind of different. So if you're, you know, trying to break into, what is it? let me, let me, uh, let me rephrase my sentence here. So no matter what you're trying to do, whether you're trying to break into indie or the mainstream big two or whatever's, whatever's left over, um, you have to be creating. And people don't like to hear this answer that you, you've got to, you've got to be able to show people stuff that you've done. You, you can't show people your, your dream or wish list of like, hey, I want to do this. That's great. Go make it. Come back to us and we'll, we'll either, you know, you can pitch your product or we can look at your inks or we can look at your colors or or this or that. So you have to be creating, you have to be practicing, you have to be building a portfolio. Uh, you Nowadays you have to be branching out and connecting with people online and stuff like that too, because it, it's totally different for everyone. I got into it by working at an art store and Danny Mickey came in and he was, he was inking Spawn at the time and he had just started a studio and we were talking and I had been practicing inking at the time. So mine was hmm. like a super lucky situation. And, uh, but I do, I do use that when I talk to younger people about like, you know, what they say about, uh, now I'm going to forget what I always say. It's the, that old saying about luck where it's uh, preparation meets uh, opportunity. opportunity. So right. it's like, you never know what your opportunity is going to be, but you want to be ready when it happens. So you want to be, say you're working a retail job, but you want to be a comic book illustrator. Well, then when you get home, you have to pretend that you have a deadline. And you have to get a certain amount of work done and you have to focus on that project. But you still got to focus on your day job too, which, and that helps you build professionalism and uh, build sort towards, you know, working towards bigger goals and things like that. So you have to build your, whatever craft, whatever comic craft it is, writing, lettering, penciling, whatever it is, you have to be working on it constantly. You have to know it's going to take time. You have to work on it with focus. And you have to steal yourself for constant rejection and having to prove yourself because that will be a staple in any creative career. And I see a lot sure. of people, they, they think like, oh, once you get into it, you've broken in. And uh, about 10 years into the industry, I realized 
ah, you're constantly breaking in <laughs> <laughs> from series to series. I mean, I've worked at DC. I've been up at certain, like, working at certain places and then all these editors leave and these new editors come in and you are nobody to them. You've never proven yourself to them. You haven't, you know, and you've got to start over. And it's very similar uh, trying to get a fan base in an indie book, you know, and I've stayed, I've had one foot in each thing for all these years. I've always done indie books and I've always done mainstream books. Um, and it's, yeah, it really, the, the struggles. So it's the same thing. It's, it's so funny. Sometimes people are like, Oh, I wish I had the freedom to do indie books. And you're like, all right, then you got to build your own fan base. You got to go out to those cons. You got to ship those books and they're like, Oh wait, I don't want to do that. Where on the other <laughs> side, people are like, Oh, I wish I could, you know, do the, do the big two. And then they get there and they're like, Oh man, the editor didn't let me do this. They didn't let me do that. <laughs> they took this many pages away from me. And your friend who does his indie book is like, I did my whole issue on myself, <laughs> oh, you know, right. oh, like a real artist, you know, and you're like, ah. Um, so it, it, it's funny. So the, the thing I always tell people is just no matter what it is you're trying to do, you got to you gotta practice like you already got the job. You got to be ready. So when the job comes that you just kick major butt at it and you got to be ready every day for people to tell you you don't deserve that job and you got to prove yourself. Well said. Well said. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, yep, rambled on there. No, no. I think that was all, all good advice. Um, you know, I mean, if anything, I would just build upon that and say, um, you know, one of the truisms in, in Hollywood or any creative industry is nobody knows that you can do something until you've already done it. And uh, so one of the good things about comics is that unlike um, say the book publishing industry where they may look down upon you if you decide to independently publish your novel um, that's not really the case in the comic book industry you know people uh, companies look at the fact that oh you've self-published your own book and you've been selling it at cons and uh, you know you've got a, a fan base built in they, they look at that as initiative you know and they look at that and they go well somebody already likes what this guy is doing and he's already proven that he knows how to tell a story. So they're that much more likely to give you a shot uh, working for them. Exactly. Yep. That's exactly, that's been my history. It's been what I've observed uh, with my colleagues and my peers. And that's, that's exactly, uh, you know, you gotta, you have to already have done it to yeah. get to do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So speaking of, of getting to do it, what, what is next, Terry? You were saying that you had some, uh, some other stuff coming out that you were going to pitch to Alterna and maybe some other publishers? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I have some that I, that I keep in the stable just for Alterna, and it's, it's like my fun, my fun uh, crazy, zany things. Uh, and then I'm pitching everywhere else. So, I mean, just not everywhere else, but to some of the publishers that I would, you know, like dream publishers, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, but I got two things in the work right now. Uh, not really ready to announce them because I haven't asked the artist if I can yet, but sure. they are being worked on. Uh, kind of musing and wondering what the timeline should be, especially in the time of pandemic, what, what that looks like, what pitching looks like right now, uh, yeah. and how, how much of one on hold it is. Uh, but if anything, it gives it more time to kind of flourish and nurture the pages and nurture the art and, and get it ready to go. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, I, I was off for six, seven, eight months. Can't remember. Um, just kind of taking care of myself, and I'm I'm excited to get back into doing comic books and hitting it full force. Well, you look great, man. I mean, I know you don't necessarily like to talk about personal stuff all the time, but uh, you know, we were all we all miss you, and we were all pulling for you, and uh, you know, we're we're so happy that you're feeling at least well enough to to be to be doing work and putting stuff out and to be doing things like this yeah no thank you no thank you i, I it means a lot that everybody was kind of rooting for me and, and then there when i got back i mean i, I was kind of thinking oh my gosh i'm gonna i'm got kind of like what you were saying ryan about like what have you done for me lately i could almost see turning on my twitter and and like they're like well who's this guy <laughs> <laughs> you know so it was it's, it's nice to see your faces it's it's and the the open arms have been noticed so i appreciate it guys Absolutely, man. Yeah. Um, and Ryan, do you have any uh, projects that you're working on that you know you can talk about after Gods and Gears or coming up? 
Well, uh, I've got a few ideas that I'm thinking about doing. Uh, nothing really to, to launch or announce here. I do have my YouTube channel where I do pretty much daily inking demos. Yeah, uh, which are really cool. Really cool. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, still, it's, I've had the channel for a while, and I've been experimenting with it for the last couple of years, and I think I found my groove with this show called that I'm calling Late Night Inks, where sometime earlier in the evening I ink a piece, and then later on at night, usually at 11 or 12, uh, I post it as a premiere on YouTube and I'm there in the chat so people can come and it's almost like doing the live show, but I'm not interrupting the demo. I'm telling a story while I'm doing the demos. So you can listen to that or we can chat in the, in the live chat as well. Oh, cool. Uh, so that's actually been kind of fun. It's, it's been a little different experiment. And that's just, uh, just like with Terry's channel. It's just my name, Ryan Wynn, and you'll find, you'll find my channel. Awesome. Um, awesome. But yeah, with, with uh, comic wise, we're just going to, we're going to keep gods and gears going. Um, issue five is not going to come out till uh, 2021. Uh, but we do, we will uh, keep everyone entertained and we're going to have the uh, giant collection and we're going to have a campaign and we're going to have more animation and stuff like that. So stay tuned. Very cool. Very cool. Well, um, I've got a couple little things that are going to be coming out. Um, uh, Henry and I have a story called The Old Gods Ain't What They Used to Be in a uh, uh, Cthulhu comics anthology called Cthulhu is still is hard to spell the terrible twos uh, for wannabe press. And that just like did real well on Kickstarter and is going to be coming out real soon. So um, and then I've got another uh, kind of short comedic horror um story coming out called Where Waldo uh, that's going to be coming out uh, from Scary Tales Publishing. They're, they're kind of like, um, like a, a modern day Warren kind of, you know, um, horror comics, black and white horror comics publisher. Um, so I'm not sure which book that's going to be in yet, but that's going to be coming out. And uh, I've been playing around with the idea of um, doing a comic book that's kind of uh, hosted by the guy, the characters in the play that I did, Dr. Zamba's Ghost Show of Terror. Um, so it'd be kind of like a horror anthology where, you know, each story is introduced by uh, uh, Dr. Zamba or Sirena or Professor Payne, you know. And uh, yeah, I've got, I've, I've got some ideas for that. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. Those are great characters. I've seen the show live, so I, I know the characters he's talking about. Yeah, man. Yeah, thanks for coming coming out to that show. I was actually I was going to have another show that I I wrote um, that's um, called The Crew, which is kind of like uh, I'm a huge Motley Crue fan, right? And <laughs> it, it's it's everything that's not in The Crew, the movie and the book, because as a fan, like there's a lot there that I feel um, if it isn't preserved by somebody like me, is just going to be lost to history, and. Uh, the Hollywood Fringe Fest got got postponed and delayed. Now they're they're talking about doing it to uh, this fall. I'm not really sure if that's going to happen. I'm kind of waiting. I'm doing rewrites on the play right now because uh, I kind of want to time it when they when the crew does the stadium tour, and I think that's probably going to be delayed as well. So we'll see. I can't say when it's going to happen, but it will definitely happen. And when it does, it's going to be good. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm not shocked that you're a Motley Crue fan. No. <laughs> I should give out a shout out too to uh, Atomic Basement Comics, which is uh, Mike Wellman's new comic book store down in Long Beach. Uh, Mike is a huge, huge supporter of indie comics. He's a comic book writer himself, and he's a big supporter for Alterna Comics. Um, he stocks them in his shop. He's a big supporter of The Wicked Righteous and Scrimshaw, Gods and Gears, Tinseltown, all of our stuff. Um, so Mike Wellman, good guy, big supporter of Alterna. And, uh, unfortunately his store opened up, had a great grand opening and then kind of, you know, the, the epidemic hit. So, um, you know, we're just wishing him well and, uh, looking forward to working with him again once, once we get past this. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, any, uh, any last words? I know you got a, a heart out here at nine thirty, Terry. Yeah, I've got a curfew. My wife, uh, I've got a hard curfew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing on my end. I did want to say, I, not that I forgot, but I, I, I think it's okay if I announce it. But 
uh, I'm going to be, I'm working on an anthology called the Nightmare Theater Horror Anthology with uh, uh, David Schrader, uh, Clay Adams, um, uh, Don Walker. There's a lot of people in this anthology. Mm, but it's, nice. It looks pretty cool. I'm excited about the story. It's uh, not giving too much away, but it's, it re- it's a horror story revolving around a comic book writer who just wins an Eisner. And then it just goes downhill from there. So ah, <laughs> kiss of death. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so who's putting that out? Uh, you know what? I maybe I should have done a little bit more homework. I don't know. I don't know. Who's okay. Putting it out. <laughs> well, I know Don. He's a great guy. He's a great artist. So I'm sure that's gonna be a terrific book to look out for for sure. Yeah. That's cool. I should put in a plug. Uh, you know. Uh, Omar Spahi was supposed to host this, and uh, I, I think the fact that he's not here is probably f- due to no fault of his own. The gods have kind of conspired against us. It's amazing it's happening at all, but um, you know, everything from his building lost power for two days to Twitter DM just stopped working out <laughs> of the blue right when we were supposed to do this. So, um, But Omar it has a great podcast called the Comic Streamer Podcast, I believe. Um, and he does interviews with all kinds of comics creators. He's a comic book writer himself. And he's also um, an animation writer, a movie producer. Mm-hmm. And he's got a new movie out that he produced on Netflix right now called um, Code 8. And it's got Stephen, what's the guy who plays Green Arrow's last name? Anel? Anel, is that right? Okay. Anyhow. Amel. Amel. Okay. Well, it's, it's got him in it, and it's like a terrific, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, but it's mm-hmm. like a, a futuristic sci-fi action adventure, and it ties into like superheroes, and it's definitely got, you know, some influences of RoboCop and... Uh, Blade Runner, and it's real dark and gritty and cool, and uh, I was I was blown away by it. You know, I thought I thought like, wow, I got to talk to Omar about exactly what his connection is to this and what you know what he his involvement was as a producer because it turned out great. It's like one of the top ten watched movies on Netflix this week, I think. So you know, very happy for him, and he's a father too. So mm-hmm. he's welcome to the you know Dave and, and Terry Club now, Ryan. What are your parting words of wisdom? I'd just like to thank all the Alterna readers for their support these last couple of years uh, and all the Gods and, Ge- Gods and Gears, if I could say it, Gods and Gears readers uh, for all their support. We've had, I've been getting great letters from people, uh, great reviews on YouTube. People are leaving. It's been wonderful. So thank you guys. Hey, I got a question for you about the Gods and Gears toys. You did some prototypes. Uh, we do have, actually, I got them right here. <laughs> I was like, you know, he always asks. So I'm gonna. So yeah, we uh we have a couple. We have four figures. I've only got two here, uh, driver and shotgun, and we built their their car with their sidecar uh, for photo shoots, and we made some videos on the YouTube channel with that. And these are going to be a big stretch goal uh, for this summer uh, when we do our our crowdfund. We're gonna have the first set of figures on there. Wow. Uh, they're three and a quarter. Uh, they're sculpted and designed by uh, AC Toy Design. You can find him on YouTube and Patreon. He's a fantastic toy designer, and he's he's going to be doing, I think, a Voidwalker figure as well for Spencer Desmond. Oh, awesome! Which is also another alternative book. Uh, so, so yeah, that's that's our our big. We hope we hope we get to the point we can mass produce a few or small run of figures that would be awesome so this is uh the kickstarter you guys are going to do is that going to be for the first collection or but we're actually that's we were we've got a few things in the works so uh yeah not not nothing solidified quite yet uh because we want to we want to do something for the next series as well so uh we're in talks with peter about kind of how to go about that right now okay Okay, very good. And uh, Peter, Sem- the, the Peter that we keep referring to, by the way, is Peter Semetti. He's the head of Alterna Comics, has been for the past 14 years. And he's really, you know, uh, for those of you who don't know Alterna Comics, we are the comics publisher that is published on newsprint. Um, the price point right now is $1.99, roughly half uh, the price for a normal comic on the newsstands today um, because they're pro- published on newsprint and they look and feel and smell like comic books used to. And uh, Peter's great. He's always uh, looking for new and innovative ways to get 
comics uh, exposed and into people's hands that otherwise wouldn't know about them, wouldn't have them. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to be uh, part of the Alterna family. Very well. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks to WonderCon for having us. We hope to see you next year in person uh, at a panel and at our booths. And uh, until then, everybody, stay inside if you can stay safe uh wear your masks and uh we'll get through this together take care <laughs>